thank you so much, Verna and Martin. I'd like to encourage our audience to put their questions to our speakers in the questions box. Um, Martin, someone wants to know whether they need IV data in monkeys to inform extrapolations if you intend to give your drug subcutaneously. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think personally, I would say yes. And part of the reason for that is simply, you know, the, 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 the difference or pitfall number one, where you have some multi-exponential decline systemically and then a mono-exponential decline or a different profile subcutaneous than IV. So it becomes important to uh, understand both aspects and it becomes easier if you have a, a modeling framework or you have a model where you can put all these different pieces of information together. You don't need a lot of IV data. Uh, you don't need to do every study with uh, with IV data, but having some idea, uh, at least a pilot uh, PK study with some IV data in monkeys would be highly uh, beneficial to, to the rest of the exercise and the clinical development program down the road. Great. Thank you, Martin. Verna, can, someone wants to know, what's your thought on the need for assessing the potential for QT prolongation with oligos? Yeah, I think that's a that's an important uh, point as well. You know, as I mentioned at, at the beginning of my talk, that there are other clinical pharmacologists aspects of, of the development of oligonucleotides that one needs to consider, and QTC assessment is one of them. Um, so, um, a lot of these drugs that have been um, approved to the FDA or under development will run the some in vitro assessments uh, of QT prolongations or, or HERG assessments and also do investigations in the clinical setting. So third QT studies have been done for these agents as well as concentration QTC analysis. So far what I've seen in terms of the, um, the publications of the compounds we worked with and that there was no QT prolongation. Um, but again, as, a, as I said, it's an evolving field. We are learning as we develop this drug. So I do recommend that we include the QT assessments in the during development. Thanks, Verna. Someone wants you to know, wants to, you to explain, Martin, why oligonucleotides have such a long terminal half-life since they're highly soluble drugs. So they, they they have a long half life because they the the pharmacodynamic effect right so they bind to risk so it's all about the binding uh, of these drugs to their target endpoint and all the interrelationships that that implies so because they bind to to these profiles they stick they stick to the tissue and they end up redistributing and they end up that end up prolonging the uh, the half life that you end up seeing. Thank you. Looks like we've got uh, one more question for you, Martin. Have you considered using PBPK modeling using preclinical data and IV IVE for first in human clinical studies or at a later stage for drug drug interaction evaluation? That's a good question. I think there are some uh, publications out there with some possible PBPK models that could be applied. Uh, we have to remember that PBPK models is an emerging field right now, so it, it, it's it's emerging across the entire uh, the entire industry, and it's certainly true of uh, of oligonucleotides as well. So I think we will see more of that in the future, um, and and certainly I've seen some targeted use of these models for for certain particular. And molecules. So I do think in the future we're going to see more of that. Uh, whether there's an actual framework in place, you know, that's another question. But I think as the science evolves, we're going to see more and more of that. Absolutely. Okay, great. Looks like we don't have any more questions. Oh, sorry. One looks like one more came in. Um, I think this is for you also, Martin. Um, are radio labeled QWBA studies done in rat? And what about radio labeled animal, rat and dog metabolism studies to translate to humans given the similarity across species? 
I, I've seen some come QWBA studies and there have been some that have been done in multiple species. That's one of the basis why how they hang their hats around its similar distribution across all species. So I've seen it, uh, I've, I've seen uh, some of those studies in terms of QWBA uh, and radio label studies to inform that. I think as the knowledge has developed, the need for those studies has decreased. Uh, and whether you need a particular one for your ASO probably depends on your particular uh, program. Um, but yeah, originally there's been a, there were a lot of studies done in these species uh, for for these compounds in, in for QWBA. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Martin and Verna. And now we're going to pass it back to Pam to wrap things. Up.